It looked like a pilot in distress, but it was far from it. See a pilot's joyride that's now being investigated by the FAA. The rain may be tapering to showers tonight, but the wind, the chill, it's just beginning. I'll show you. And healing anti-Asian hate with art. The art is turning hateful experiences into sculptures in real time. This is News for Now for April 15th. I'm Adam Cooperstein. The video is wild. A man is seen attacking Black Lives Matter protesters with a glove made out of blades, and now he's facing the music almost a year later. This all went down in Queens. Frank Cavaluzzi is the guy here accused of chasing down protesters, attacking them with that Wolverine-style glove. Cavaluzzi was seen on video jumping out of his SUV and then trying to attack those demonstrators last June in Whitestone. Prosecutors say the glove was made of actual knives. And now Cavaluzzi's charged with attempted murder, assault, and menacing. <laughs> At first glance, people worried this was a pilot in distress on Long Island, but police say he definitely was not. This was just a joyride. Police in Sag Harbor got a bunch of 911 calls about this plane flying just a few hundred feet above the ground Tuesday. The plane nearly clipped trees and a flagpole, and now the FAA is investigating the incident. Police confirmed the pilot is a body shop owner and told investigators he was just having a little fun. We've reached out to that pilot for comment, but we haven't heard back. Well, people gathered in Westchester last night for a candlelight vigil for hip hop legend DMX in his hometown of Mount Vernon. Here we go. At least 100 people went to 4th Street Park to remember DMX, whose real name was Earl Simmons. DMX died last week after suffering a heart attack. His music was played, stories were shared, and his legacy was honored with speeches. And he gave lessons, and he taught us how to fall and get back up. He taught us how to admit our mistakes and our struggles. He taught us to press in and try again. He taught us that even in the midst of your struggles, you can still have great success. At the end of the vigil, red and black balloons, each marked with an X, were released up into the sky. Governor Cuomo is now relaxing the 11 p.m. curfew for restaurants and bars. Yesterday, the governor revealed he is allowing them to stay open one whole hour later until midnight. He also extended the curfew for catered events like weddings until 1 a.m. Those new rules take effect on Monday, April 19th. Two New Jersey best friends could be heading off to an Ivy League college together. That is, if they can decide just which one. Clifton High School seniors Ashley Hernandez and Maria Mufflet have both been accepted to five Ivy League universities. It's amazing. Harvard, Yale, Penn, Dartmouth, and Brown all accepted them. Both young women are the first in their families to go to college, too. Those girls have been best friends since meeting in an honors program way back in middle school. In Connecticut, a fugitive named Buddy that's been on the run for the better part of a year will live out the rest of his days at an animal sanctuary in Florida. We're talking about Buddy the Beefalo? That's a cross between a bison and domestic cattle. Last August, he escaped his handlers while on the way to the slaughterhouse in Plymouth. He's eluded local police until now, and they say he was finally caught, and now after a full veterinary exam, Buddy is gonna be sent to Critter Creek Farm Sanctuary in Gainesville. A longtime city institution is finally getting its due. Many of us know an outstanding neighborhood bodega is priceless, right? And that's why My Bodega Online app created a Best Bodega Award, the Bronx Edition. The categories here include Best Bodega Sandwich and Best BEC, Bacon, Egg, and Cheese. Bodegas are also going to be judged on cleanliness and menu presentation. And the winners will be announced on YouTube May 1st at noon. Well, tonight you can enjoy an in-person performance from the New York Philharmonic for the first time in more than a year. This is from the Philharmonic's performance last night on the west side at a new venue called The Shed in Hudson Yards. The indoor concert followed all the current COVID guidelines. People in attendance needed to show proof of a negative test. They had to wear masks inside. They were distanced and it was a limited audience. And members of the orchestra say they are so happy to just be back on stage. Tonight's show starts at 8 p.m. 
Well, goodbye sunshine, hello rain. Here's Maria now with a look at how long this rain's gonna last, Maria. Those 70s, some of that sunshine, a distant memory from yesterday, right? It's the rain, the clouds, even the chill starting to really settle in, and that continues this evening. So around dinner time through late tonight, the showers, some of that rain may still be heavy at times as temperatures fall into the 40s by about midnight. Now we may be tapering to showers, but between now and tomorrow morning, it'll add up. We're talking about maybe as much as one to two inches of rainfall, especially for Suffolk County here. You get into Connecticut, it's more like two to three inches of rainfall. So it is a good soaking. We are running a deficit for the month, so that's the good side. Uh, unfortunately, we do take a pretty big dip for temperatures starting off tomorrow in the 30s from White Plains to Sussex, lower 40s for New York. Now we're talking about that rain, but some of it may be snow, so this could be impacting if you have travel outside of our area, especially New York State Thruway, Massachusetts Turnpike, up into New England. So just a heads up there. Eventually, spring makes a comeback, but you have to wait a little bit longer. With a rise in hateful violence, it's a dark time for the Asian American community, but an art installation in the city is now looking to heal by transforming stories of hate into works of art. Hello, I am Amanda Ping Podibakia. I am a multidisciplinary artist based in Brooklyn. I think a lot of my work is inspired by this idea that a sense of belonging, fostering a sense of belonging is absolutely crucial to our mental and physical well-being. I'm incredibly proud of my Asian American identity. I think you see so much of it in the work I've produced as of late in partnership with the New York City Commission on Human Rights, but we are in a really dark time for our community and I would love my art to offer a moment of peace because we deserve that. We deserve to live without fear. We deserve to thrive in a place that we consider home, even though others may not consider it ours as well. Which is ultimately what happens here is through a public website, mayweknow.nyc, New Yorkers and actually frankly folks anywhere can submit their stories. Through these 16 internet connected printers, the stories print out in real time as you submit them. And when you submit a story, an incandescent bulb lights to say that you're not alone or listening. Um, and I harvest all of these stories uh, and um, I weave all of our stories into this thread of courage and resilience and, you know, these hanging vessels of hope and belonging. We've got sort of like these hanging willows and what I wanted to capture with the sculpture is the depth and complexity of healing from trauma. In one light, this can be sort of like the demons of our past, but uh, in another, it looks like beautiful willows waving in the breeze. It's sort of like hanging pieces that look a little bit like lichen, symbolize the you know way that young people are actually supporting their friends through these really difficult moments. And so I think it is the perfect symbol for resilience and growth after really difficult circumstances. I invite everyone to lay down their burdens. It's a space where your you know, private secrets, your, you know, hidden shame can see the light of day, but you can also feel that you are not alone. And now it's time to check in with New York Live to see what they have going on today. Hit it, boys. Mochi-filled cookies, a.k.a. Mooks, have taken over NYC. So today we are headed to the source of the city's current most popular mashup. Okay, so first tell me about the Boys Co. We are a Queens-based, Filipino-owned dessert uh, company. Uh, we specialize in mochi-based desserts. So when the Mooks was born, were you looking to create something like a viral cronut, or did it just happen? It kind of just happened when the pandemic hit. We were kind of bummed out because we were known to do pop-ups. And then during pandemic, we can't do any of those things. So actually, Rivi uh, decided that we need to push ourselves and have a new product come out in the market. Because when we started, we only have one product with three different flavors, and that was like the tofu mochi bites. And then when the mooks came out, we just decided to like, we already have an ingredients for mochi, and then, you know, anybody loves a cookie. So we just mash it all together. You guys have been essentially sold out for the last two months. How does that feel? And then also how can people get their hands on one of these mooks? 
It feels amazing. It feels crazy because before we would always try to think of a marketing tactic or how can we get more orders? How can we go about it? It's been crazy just having it uh, sold out so fast like that. Um, in terms of ordering some more, so April is already all sold out. So we're going to be opening up May slots and we'll be opening it on a weekly basis through our website. So what is it like for you to see so many people enjoying these traditional Filipino flavors that you all grew up with? It's a way for us to feel at home, especially here, as since we're all immigrants and sharing it to people who haven't tried it at all. Oh, that's a yeah. good one. That's a good mochi bowl. Wow. This is like eating a light, fluffy cloud. The mochi, is it, it's flavored for each cookie, correct? Yes, correct. So this is salted caramel mochi. Yes. I've never had anything like this, it's so good. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Everything was delicious. And I can't wait to see what comes next from you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.